I want to take a look at an important part of short-term financial management uh, that deals with the operating cycle and the cash cycle. The operating cycle deals with the time it takes from you for you to receive inventory, sell it, and then collect on those receivables. And you can see this is an important part of running a business. You buy some goods and then you try and sell them and then you collect on that sale. So the operating cycle is defined as the inventory period plus the accounts receivable period. And the inventory period is the time inventory sits on your shelf. From, so from the time you buy it to the time you actually sell it. The accounts receivable period, on the other hand, is the time it takes to collect on those receivables. So there are a lot of businesses where you, where you finance the sale for the person who purchased it. You go in, they buy it, they send you um, a purchase order, and then you send them a bill, and then they pay in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, etc. The cash cycle is the time between the payment for inventory and the receipt from the sale of the inventory. So this is the case where, you know, how long do you have to finance this inventory? And this is defined to be the operating cycle minus the accounts payable period. Okay, so the operating cycle we just discussed, the accounts payable period is how long does, does your supplier allow you before you have to pay them? Okay, accounts payable is the, again, is defined to be the time between the receipt of inventory and the payment for it. So the cash cycle measures how long we need to finance inventory and receivables. So let's look at an example. This might be a little bit clearer. Suppose you purchase $1,000 worth of inventory on day zero using credit. You pay the bill in 30, 30 days later, and then after another 30 days, someone buys the $1,000 in inventory for $1,400. And you give this buyer 45 days to pay for the purchase, and they take the full 45 days. So this is an example from uh, the Corporate Finance, Essentials of Corporate Finance book by Ross Westerfield and Jordan. So let's look at a, a table. This might be a little bit clearer in terms of understanding how this works. On day zero, that's today, you acquire the inventory on credit. There's no cash effect because you didn't pay out anything and no, no money came in and you didn't spend any money on the inventory. On day 30, you pay for the inventory. So you, you're paying $1,000 and the cash effect is minus $1,000. $1,000 flows out of your bank account. On day 60, you sell the inventory on credit. And again, there's no cash effect because you sold it on credit. So you didn't receive any money. And then on day 105, you collect on the sale and you collect $1,400. And so the cash effect is a positive $1,400. So the operating cycle is that entire period, that entire 105 days. 60 days was the inventory period. That is, from the day you purchased the inventory to the day you sold it. Remember, you purchased it, you didn't have to pay for it for 30 days, and it took you another 30 days to sell it. The accounts receivable period is the amount of time from the sale until you get paid. And it took 45 days to get paid for this stuff that you sold. The cash cycle is the operating cycle, so that full 105 days, minus the accounts payable period. And the accounts payable period was 30 days. You bought it, you didn't have to pay for 30 days. So the cash cycle is 75 days. So here's a nice picture, okay? This might be a better way to understand this, okay? This is time period zero here, okay? So when you purchase the inventory and then you pay for the inventory, and then you receive your money at the end. Okay, so that's this is the entire period, the operating cycle. But you can see it's broken up into parts. The, the um, operating cycle can be defined as the inventory period, so this is the time from when you purchase the inventory to the time you sold it, plus the accounts receivable period, that is, how long does it take to get pay, paid? 
down here, the cache cycle is the time from when you paid for the inventory until you get paid. Okay, and this part right here is the accounts payable period. Okay, that's the time period that your supplier is giving you credit. Now, obviously, as as a business person, your goal is to shorten this time period. I wish I had little sliders here so I could slide this along. And you could do this by shortening the accounts receivable period. That is, making your uh, your per the people who bought from you pay faster. Okay, you could give them terms that require they pay sooner. Or oftentimes, businesses will give credit if you pay sooner. You may have seen something like 210 net 30. That means that you get a 2% discount if you pay within 10 days, um, but, the, but the balance is due in 30 days. So you can shorten that if possible. If you're, if you're a strong enough supplier, you may be able to negotiate better terms with the people who purchase from you. Okay. On the other hand, one way to shorten this cash cycle here is to increase your accounts payable period. That is, try and get better terms. So instead of paying every 30 days, perhaps you could negotiate where you don't have to pay for 45 or 60 days. So you would push this this way and shorten that cash cycle. A company like Walmart you know, a company that's very big that its suppliers really want to do business with may be able to negotiate better terms for itself. So it may be able to say, look, if you want to do business with us, you have to give us 60 days to pay. We don't want to do it in 30 days. So that's one of the things that you're trying to do. You're trying to, you know, shorten this period here. You're shorten the operating cycle, shorten the cash cycle. Okay, that can be good for business. All right, if you want to work this stuff out from scratch, okay, here's, here's how it works. And you may recall, if you've studied uh, financial ratios, that the inventory period is 365 divided by inventory turnover. And inventory turnover is defined as cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Inventory turnover essentially is how many times do you empty out the warehouse per year? Okay, inventory turnover of one means you fill up the warehouse once and by the end of the year you've emptied it all out. Inventory turnover of two means you've filled it up and emptied it out twice. So if you take 365 and divide it by inventory turnover, if you had inventory turnover of two, that means you're holding your inventory for about half a year, about 182 days. Likewise for the accounts receivable period. That's 365 over receivables turnover. Receivables turnover is defined as credit sales divided by average accounts receivable. And again, the more turnover you have, the faster the money is coming in. If you had accounts receivable turnover of, of 365, uh, that means your accounts receivable period is essentially a day. So you're probably a cash business. You're getting people are coming in, you know, your little bagel shop, somebody walks in, they buy a bagel, they pay for it right then and there. Okay, you don't have to wait to get paid. The accounts payable period, okay, again, similar type equations. This is defined accounts uh, payables turnover is cost of goods sold divided by average account payable. And the accounts payable period is 365 divided by payables turnover with the same logic that applied to the other two. So here's an example. Suppose you happen to have uh, inventory at the beginning of the period of 2 million, ends at 3 million, accounts receivable of, of 16, of 1.6 million, and ending inventory is 2 million, and accounts payable of 750,000 ends at a million at the end of the period. So these are the averages, and you get the averages just by adding these two up and dividing by two. And so let's take a look at how we work this out here. The average inventory, they've already done for you. They actually had the table. They didn't have to do it again, but it's uh, 
they have 200,000. They had 2 million before, I believe. 2 million, so they're, everything's in units of 1,000. It doesn't matter, you're dividing everything, so it really doesn't, doesn't make a big difference. Um, so it's actually 2.5 million, or in their case, 250,000 times 1,000. Okay. Inventory turnover is turning over 3.28 times per year. What does that mean? That means that uh, you sort of empty out the warehouse a little bit more than three times a year and fill it back up again. So that means you're holding your inventory for about 111 days. Okay. Similarly, the receivables are going to have an average of uh, 180,000. And again, we should have three zeros here. And receivables turnover turns out to be 6.39 times so that means it's turning over 6.39 times. And so you're getting paid about every 57 days. So when you add this up, your operating cycle is about 168 days. So the savvy financial managers going to want to try and shorten this, shorten this. You may have heard the term just-in-time inventory. Okay, Dell did a lot of that in their days rather than holding on to disk drives and processors. They had them delivered every day, and sometimes several times a day, and built the computers right then and there. So the shorter they shorten their inventory period, okay? Some companies are able to shorten their receivables period, okay, or extend their turnover period so that they can, they can improve their operating cycle.